Good morning. Um, today I want to talk about the two places, United States, United States of America, how you go from being a citizen of one of the states to a citizen in the federal government or called a federal citizen, also called an officer or an employee, and how you go from here to here and what these two places are. So we're going to look at, this is kind of like the preamble. It starts off with we the people. Okay, people is a proper noun, meaning it's specific people. It's not people of the whole country. If it were people of the whole country, it would be a lowercase p, meaning in general. That's basic grammar that you learn in elementary school. Okay, some of your first grammar lessons are distinguishing between a proper noun and a common noun. This is a proper, proper noun. This means that there are specific people that it's talking about. Who are these specific people? In the Constitution, it says that they are citizens of the United States. Citizens of the United States in the Constitution are representatives, senators, and the president as the commander-in-chief. So these three, and the just the judges, make up the people, the specific people. Who are the specific people in the Constitution? They are the representatives, the senators, the president on the military side, and then judges. They make up and work for the United States of America. Okay, so we the people of the federal government or we the officers and employees of the federal government, or we the citizens of the United States of the federal government, we the employees, we the employees of the federal government. We will do some stuff for, and in the constitution it says they're going to receive some pay, for the United States of America, our employer, our surety, the responsible party. If the states are the responsible party, then it's up to the states to make sure that its employees are doing their job and they're doing their job according to the contract, which is the Constitution. If these were the same places, it would just say, we the states do some stuff for ourselves. And it kind of looks like that's what it says, but it's really not. So the United States are dependent states. In Black's Law 9, 9, dependent state means that it can't stand alone. It wants to stand alone. It wants power over the states and the people. It wants to rule. It wants to... Um, be able to do whatever it wants. And one way that it tried to do that was to create Federal Reserve notes. So back in ancient Rome, Caesar, the emperor, would allow poor people to live on common lands that weren't owned by the people and were overseen by the empire. So these common people needed a job to do, so the emperor would give them some of the lands and let them work it and uh, grow crops on it. But as a result, they had to give part of whatever they grew to the empire. This was called a tax. So it's the same with Federal Reserve notes. The United States acted outside of the Constitution without the states doing anything about it, without the surety or the employer telling them they can't. They created Federal Reserve notes. They flooded those out into the system and let you use it, and then when you use it, they tax it. And you have to pay a part of your profit or your income, your yield, back to it for the use of it. Even though we didn't ask it, 
Most of us don't want it. We don't like it. It's unconstitutional. It's void. But if you try to fight them, then they just make you pay more. Okay, so the United States is a dependent state, which means it has no sovereignty. Dependent states have no sovereignty. The United States works for the United States of America. America is a surety. It's the responsible party. They're supposed to make sure, the legislatures of the state are supposed to make sure that the United States does what it's supposed to do. It's a corporation or an instrumentality, okay? The federal government creates instrumentalities such as the CDC and the Federal Reserve Bank, and they are businesses or corporations that work for the United States, but they actually have no authority because they're just businesses. Even if the United States says that they have authority according to the Constitution, they don't because um, they're not, um, doing what they're supposed to do according to the Constitution. So these instrumentalities created by the United States are supposed to work for the United States and the military to help get some stuff done. But what they've done was they've brought everybody in under it. And then these instrumentalities, such as the Federal Reserve Bank, the IRS, the CDC, FDA, and all these other um, corporations outside of the Constitution, um, what they say is that they Congress has given them the power, but Congress didn't have control over all the people. Okay, America had control over Congress as an instrumentality. Congress created instrumentalities, and those instrumentalities say, well, Congress gave us the right to do these things, so you have to pay us, or you have to do what we say, or you have to wear something on your face, or you have to get something into your body, even if you don't want it, you have to, but that's a lie, okay? Because we have something called imperatives and grammar, which are commands. So the state is supposed to command in its instrumentality, the United States. It's supposed to command it. But it doesn't, it's just failed all around, just failed at its job of protecting us from it growing too large. So what it did was, um, it's basically taken over by flooding the reserve notes into the system, taxing those reserve notes, creating businesses or um, smaller dependent states which have no um, sovereignty, and having no sovereignty, they have no power. They bring us in under it through their forms, and they tell us we have to comply. It uses imperatives. They say, you will, you will, must, you're ordered to, right, because Congress gave us the power to force you to do something and Congress never had the power to give to the instrumentalities to force you to do anything. So it works the same way. The states altogether called the United States created an instrumentality called the United States. So the states altogether called the United States of America created a corporation called the United States as its instrumentality to do some things. What does it do? Um, war, peace, and in between here, treaties, treaties for peace. And then the things in the Constitution are what they can do for themselves to get these things done. What they need to do to get these things done, to win a war so they can make treaties and declare peace. Those are the main objectives of the Constitution. And how does it do that? It does that by um, military force. So if you read the Constitution, it basically is um, lining up the military, how to pay for the military, where's the military gonna be, how are we gonna arm the military, how are we gonna feed the military, how are we gonna 
keep in contact from one post to the next post? How are those posts going to keep in contact with Congress through post offices and post roads? Um, how we can come up with new um, war tactics, new war equipment, and then copyright and patent and trademark and, and all those things for those those things that we need to make war and win war. So uh, that's what that's what this corporation was supposed to do. And these these are employees. The people here are the employees of the United States, the officers and employees of the United States. Okay, they're the employees of the United States of America. What is the United States? It's the independent state that created the dependent state. It's the states collectively that came together to create the United States. It's, it's employees. They're the sovereign. The independent state is the sovereign. So this sovereign created this, dependent to this. So United States, it's like saying the employer is over the employees. The sovereign, the non-sovereign. But when this creates some things, this becomes sovereign to its creations, its instrument, its instrumentality, such as the Federal Reserve, its Federal Reserve notes. Okay, and the flag is like the flag belongs to the United States of America, but it's in use by the United States. That's like your boss telling you, here's your uniform. I'm paying for your first set of uniforms. You have to wear them when you're working. So the United States flies the flag of the United States of America. Okay, so the United States of America is the independent state to the United States. It's the sovereign to the United States. It's the owner of the United States. It's the master of its servants. United States officers and employees. It's the creators. It's the employer. These are just ways of looking at it. So let's go over the preamble again. We the employees of the federal government created by the states do some stuff for the states collectively. It's this is this is between the state legislators between each other to create the United States. It has nothing to do with independent people inside the states. The independent people inside the states aren't responsible for this, for the United States or what it does. We're not responsible for its debt. We're not responsible for um, their payments. We're not responsible for any of that. They're not supposed, we're not supposed to register our properties with them. Um, now Lincoln came in and after the Civil War, when the country was basically ravished and created something called a legal state. Looks just like a regular state. Looks just like the employee, employer, but not. Has no actual sovereignty in reality is a dependent state created by the United States, okay? An instrumentality, it's instrumentalities to get some stuff done, but has actually nothing to do with us, even though now we have birth certificates that show that once you fill it out, you're filling it out a form to create a legal entity so, under the presidency, in Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5, it says the president is a natural citizen or a citizen of the United States. A citizen, the basic definition of citizen is a member. So, if you're a citizen, meaning you're a member, then the member has to be um, a citizen of the United States. And how do you become a citizen of the United States? You fill out the forms and you go to a court and you swear in and you become naturalized in a court of record. 
So you become registered. Okay, you become registered to be a member as one of the people. Okay, so this was the creation of a legal entity to work as an employee of its employer, to become an officer or employee of the instrumentality of the states. So who's required to be a citizen of the United States? In the Constitution, it says representatives, senators, and president. The president in both his capacities, executive and as commander in chief. So citizens of the United States are members. Judges are not required to be citizens of the United States. So if there is a citizen of the United States and not a citizen of the United States, which one are you? Are you a representative, senator, or president? Or are you more like a non-citizen? A non-citizen of the United States. Now, if you tell them you're not a citizen of the United States, they get really mad. They don't even laugh at you, they get mad. And they'll fine you. They'll send you a bill. Okay, a bill is a notice. A notice is something that you, a notice is like a poster. Why is it called a poster? Because you post it. You post it where people can see it. And so a bill is a poster, a notice. So they bill you once you try to tell them you're not a citizen of the instrumentality. They really don't like that. They need you to use their Federal Reserve notes so that they can continue to tax you. They can continue to um, push you into a legal state using your birth certificate. So you have two, what appears to be two capacities as the president as commander in chief is a military position because he's the commander in chief over the military. He's also the executive officer and that's a civil, appears to be a civil position. So if you can be a natural citizen as the president in article two, section one, clause five, you can be a natural citizen or a citizen of the United States. then there's two different people. So this natural citizen would be civil and the judge would be a natural citizen. Because being in the military, you're subject, or being a citizen, you're subject to the draft. These people are already in military positions they're not subject to the draft, they're already in the military. But if you claim to be a citizen of the United States and you're not in one of these positions, then you're subject to the draft. Now the president could be a natural citizen or a citizen of the United States. So he could come from here and where did they come from? These people came from the States but they came from the federal lands on the states because you had to be seven years already a citizen to be a representative, nine years to be a senator, and it's 14 as president, right? So how did you become this? How did you become seven or nine? Now, some people say, well, because by the time Congress got out or whatever, then, you know, these, then everyone else would be citizen of the United States since the United States was just created. Okay. Well, that can't be true because the court of record for citizenship and naturalization is still open even today. Well, many people believe that that's because when you 
that the people believe that the United States is a country. And so when you come into this country, you're coming into the United States. And so you have to go into a United States court to become naturalized. And that appears to not be true at all. What appears to be true is that when you're in one of the states and you're just coming in as an immigrant, that you apply to the state to become a state citizen. If then you want to become a representative, because it doesn't say that you have to be a citizen of the United States to be a judge. Anyone with good behavior and a certain age can be a judge. You only have to be a citizen for seven, nine, or 14 years to be a representative, a senator, or a commander in chief, military. That's why I'm saying these are military positions. Because these people had to go on to federal lands. But to get onto the federal lands, they had to become naturalized in a court of record, in a, in a federal court, a district court under the federal control. So the application had to be approved. There had to be a record of it. And when they did that, they became a citizen, which is a member. Members become servants and servants in our system are the uh, military members. The president is commander in chief. Washington had a commission. Washington served in the um, Revolutionary War as a, a commissioned officer. And you can find information on his commission. That's why he was put in position as president. He was elected because um, he had already had many years in. He may not have had 14 years in, but he was the best that they had at the time because he was, the, uh, I guess, a general or colonel in the military and he served uh, as a commissioned officer and was asked to become president because he was the only one that had the most qualifications. All the other signers of the Constitution, as far as I could tell, did contribute in some way or another to the Revolutionary War, to the military whether they were merchants who were bringing in goods and then distributing them, or they were in the military and serving in the military in actual combat, or they lent some equipment that they had, um, food, whatever they did, it was something that contributed to the winning of the Revolutionary War. So every person who signed the Constitution contributed something, as far as I can tell, to the Revolutionary War, to winning the Revolutionary War. And so they were the best that they had at the time. Okay, so they were, were um, the signers. And, and they signed because, in my opinion, the Constitutional is all about the states coming together during... Um, an uprising or war or an attack to send people from the states into the seat of government for wartime purposes, to win a war, make treaties, and then declare peace. But they were limited to only being on the federal lands. They became citizens, so they left their state and what they did was they um, went into an island. So like, let's say this is a state. And an island inside of a state is called a foreign nation, a foreign government. It's called foreign. So it's like there's a fence around it and there's fences around all military posts. Why would they put a fence around a military post when they work for us? because they're foreign. It's a different government. The people who were originally on the posts couldn't come off and use state services because they were not also at the time state citizens. They left the state, went into the court, 
applied for citizenship to become a federal citizen called a citizen of the United States on a military post, which started their time, their years of service, so that they could go to um, the seat of government. The seat of government is talked about in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, and so are these lands. The seat and the lands are talked about in this section of the Constitution. So, if you wanted to be one of these, Commander-in-Chief, Representatives, or Senators, you had to go into a court of record, apply to become a naturalized citizen, called a citizen of the United States, a citizen of the United States, um, that started your time, you, you did your time while you were serving the military, okay, it makes sense, it just makes sense, just think about it, it makes sense that if you're going to go to the seat and you're gonna, you have the power to declare war, make treaties and peace. You better have some military background. You better know what you're doing. You better know how to win a war and you better know how to end a war. That's just my opinion. As commander in chief over the United States military, the greatest military force on earth, the Constitution says you need 14 years experience. Now, the black cat in the matrix has crossed our path many times. And a lot of this stuff has been switched and changed and altered. And in many of the new laws, they use these two terms, United States, or the United States in the United States of America interchangeably. They're not interchangeable. You're either here or you're here. You're here or you're here. You're a citizen or you're not. You're military or civil. Civilians cannot be in the military. That's the definition of civilian, not military. But the early laws show different things, and they're stated differently. And reading the law of, um, or the Acts statutes of 1794, uh, helped me understand that uh, the United States is the surety for the United, or the United States of America is the surety of the United States. So the first statute chapter goes from chapter one to chapter four. I don't know why that is, but chapter four, an act and alteration of the act establishing a mint and regulating the coins of the United States in section two. So the coins are the coins for the federal government by the federal government. So the United States has its own coins, its own right to have money, which makes sense because they gotta pay people. They gotta pay their citizens for doing their jobs. That's in the Constitution, they're supposed to get payment. They're supposed to get paid in gold and silver. It says section two, and be bound further enacted, and this is about the minting coins, that the assayer and chief coiner of the mint previous to entering upon the execution of their respective offices shall each become bound. So each of these people are bound to the United States of America with one or more sureties to the satisfaction of the Secretary of Treasury. Okay? So the Secretary of Treasury. So you have two systems, like you have the president as the executive officer of the United States of America, and you have the commander in chief of the land and naval forces of the United States. So the United States includes 
Congress, which is the representative senators and president, who all work for the United States of America, who is the surety or the responsible party. They're responsible for these people. They're responsible for the military. They're supposed to send their people, because originally the states individually chose who would be naturalized and it would be in a court of record and they would get administered their oath and all that. And that's how it happened to me when I joined. I went to a place called Meths. It's a military enlistment processing services or something like that. Had to do the physical, had to take the test, had to go over the test exam, had to pick my whatever my job was that I wanted to do. And I chose just anything in aviation. I wanted to do something in aviation. And so I got aircraft mechanic. I worked on F-18s at a weapons test squadron in China Lake, California. It was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, long hours, sometimes 16 hours a day. You'd get sick from working so much. Well, I did anyway. But the other thing they did was to swear you in, to take your oath, okay? And then from there, then you belong to the government. You were property. You are property if you're in the military. So if you take an oath, you need to know what the oath means. You need to know what the Constitution says. If you just read the Constitution and you're thinking that it says everything that you were told it says, you probably got some wrong ideas. So if you're getting paid Federal Reserve notes, it doesn't matter if it says state of Texas, state of Oklahoma, state of whatever, you belong to the United States as part of its legal state. And its legal states are called state of whatever, state of whatever, state of whatever, okay? So police who get paid and anyone with a license who gets paid with Federal Reserve notes, all these things are all really have been taken out of the state and brought in under the federal government as a officer and employee because likely you have a birth certificate or you've been naturalized and you're, um, you're, you're a citizen of the United States. Now, people bring up, well, what about born? It says born. Okay, so like I said, these people here, they're on federal lands. The federal lands are located in a state, the natural state, right? This is the natural state. The natural state has natural citizens. Its creation, the legal state here, the military, the United States, as citizens of the United States. These people lived here and they worked here. Now, if you go on to the VA clinic in Leavenworth, Kansas, they still have the houses there where the doctors and the nurses lived. Because once you became a citizen, you stayed on the lands, okay? They weren't allowed to come off and use schools, churches, well, probably maybe churches because that's not really a service by the state. Um, schools, hospitals, asylums, fire departments, police departments. So if you were a man, a man, and you became a citizen of the United States and you're working up to become president, and you've got your naturalization to the court of record and you go on here and let's say you're a lieutenant or a captain or a general or something, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. Um, you go on here and then you meet a lady and she goes on here to live with you because you're supposed to stay there. As officers, you're supposed to stay on post. So as officers on post, you're living here for all these years, but your wife, she may become pregnant, her kids uh, need to go to school. Where is she gonna have the baby at? She's got to come off and use the hospital. But at the time, 
they weren't state citizens any longer. They were only federal citizens because they left, this is a foreign country to them, they left the state to become federal. They became employees, but the wives were dependents and so were the children. So when it's talking about uh, non-resident aliens, it's talking about the wife who still lives off post or the children who live off post who are married to someone on post. They're citizens of the United States, but they're not living on the federal lands. And so they're a non-resident alien because they're in another state. So a lot of people are reading the laws and they're saying, well, I'm a non-resident alien. Um, no, you're not. You're not a non-resident alien. You're not even a citizen of that. You're a natural. You are a private citizen. You're an American. That's what Patrick Henry says. He says he's an American citizen and those American citizen is in the law. You can look it up. They mention American citizens. American citizens seem to be civil and judges, okay? Because the United States is for war and peace. War and peace, military. Military members. Members of what? The corporation. What corporation? The United States. For what purposes to do some stuff, those things? For who? United States of America, the states. And what are they what is the overall goal? Protect. Protect the people. Protect the citizens. Or the um, not the citizens, the uh, civilians. So civil. Civilian, non military. It makes sense that you would have a non military judge sitting interpretation of the Constitution because he will interpret it in the favor of the people, the American citizens, not the military, which would keep the military from getting too large. However, because the judges are chosen by the president, he chooses citizens of the United States to be judges. Now, it doesn't say that judges can't be citizens of the United States, but it does say that judges are silent on whether or not they are citizens of the United States. And I think that's either a flaw or maybe it was intentional because they wanted, the founders wanted to let it grow. I don't know. Um, could be any number of reasons. So these judges are supposed to interpret the constitution, but they're not military judges. When these people commit crimes on federal lands, they are supposed to be uh, court-martialed into a military court. When they commit crimes off federal lands, they would go into the state court. But the federal people can summon them back onto federal lands for court-martial because they're expected to behave anywhere they're at, even in a foreign country. But that doesn't relieve them of being held accountable by the country that they committed the crime in. So a few years back, there was a military member in Japan who injured a national, a Japanese national. He held her kidnapped on the military post in his barracks room. And so the Japanese people wanted a piece of him but the military did also, the, Amer the United States military did also. So he had to, um, they either had to um, figure it out between the two of them, whether it was gonna be, whether the court martial was gonna be enough, or maybe they already had something in writing. It did happen on the military post, but inside Japan. So there could have been some contracting going on, some agreements between the Japanese and the um, military to figure out, you know, whether or not the person was gonna stand for his crime in a military court or in the Japanese court. Okay, so I have a few more notes here.
So if you have a natural born citizen or a citizen of the United States as a requirement for presidency, then we know that there is a natural citizen and a citizen of the United States. And you have to be one or the other to be president. What's left out then must be intentional because these guys weren't stupid. And so when they didn't require a judge to be a citizen, they did that on purpose, okay? Um, perhaps it should have said the judge should have been an American citizen. But as Patrick Henry said, he said, I smell a rat. So I don't know if this was done intentional or, or not. Because, like I said, the, the um, president chooses the judges and then the Congress approves. And see, a natural citizen is not a citizen of the United States. It's not a federal citizen because federal citizens are military. So judges would be, judges would be the third or the um, office civil non-military who would um, always keep in interest the people or the United States of America, the, the people in the states. He would always be looking out for them because he's not a member of the military. He's civil, he's non-military. So he would always be looking out for the interest. He would interpret the Constitution in the interest of the people who wrote it, of the employers, of the surety. I think that was the intention. But because it hasn't gone that way and the judges all claim to be citizens of the United States, then they come under the laws. Okay? So these two are not the same thing. Civil or military, they're not the same thing. And the president holds a civil office and a military office because he's commander in chief and he's um, the executive officer of the states. So states wanted to grow if taxes were only local, as said in a recent video, which I've posted. Um, the states grew for taxing and they grew the Fed. Originally, the states didn't tax people. They were taxed locally. But in about 1913, the feds and state were taxing lands and the use of the dollar as a portion of profit, as in how Emperor Caesar did, by taxing a portion of yield when the poor used the lands, which I explained a little bit earlier. So what, it's, what I'm saying here is that these two started working together against the people so that they could use power, their power collectively, to force people in under it and all of our lands and under it. And that came with the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank in 1913, or the uh, fiat currency, basing our money on a, the fiat currency, or the debt, I'm sorry, basing fiat currency on the debt. That brought everyone in who used it under the um, uh, system of taxation by the states and the federal government, because you have states here and the federal government here. So um, the people and all our property, because we use the Federal Reserve notes and we use them to purchase our land and our mortgages and our cars, it brought in all the property in under them because now, because we bought it with their um, um, copyrighted dollars, not based on gold and silver outside the Constitution, then they would claim to own it all. Now they're saying you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. Now that I know the game, okay? I went over the book Games People Play by Eric Byrne yesterday. He's a medical doctor and he wrote this great book and, and this is a game they're playing. It doesn't make sense and it's all tyrannical and it's all outside the constitution, but that's the game. Um, and I talked a little bit about the other part of the game yesterday, how these two have worked together to bring all the people in under it, to make it a sovereign state, 
and um, grow its power. And the more power it grows, the more it can do to you, the more bad things it can do for, to you. And the more it grows, the more it does, and the more it grows, the more it does, and the more it does, and the more it grows, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is my video for today. And I hope I finished explaining everything so that you could understand it. I think um, I've gone into detail in some other respects from the information on here and other videos. And so if you want to know more, just scroll down through my videos and see if there's something. I've tried to name them appropriately so that they were easy to um, figure out what was in the video. So um, if you want to know more about this stuff, I've got lots of videos down there for you to watch. And um, with that, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, especially sharing. Uh, the biggest problem sharing videos because I've been kicked off basically every social media platform. Um, I've been silenced here on YouTube several times. I've gotten hit after hit after hit for telling people just my freedom of speech, my interpretation of the Constitution based on the laws written the um the laws written and the uh reports put out by by the eisenhower administration as well as um the constitution and the maxims of law that have been around for a really long time so uh, sharing is really important so if you could share i would really appreciate it because i would like to at some point in time experience a true free society and um, walk around with my sovereignty on my shoulder. I think that would be a great feeling. So like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.